the way, the quickest way to financial independence, which for me was what I wanted. That's not what everybody wants, but is to lower your expenses. So I had been focused on that. And as I did that process, I really focused on only investing. I use the word invest when I talk about money instead of spend for a couple of reasons. Investing means you, you expect a return when you invest in something. Welcome to the show. I'm Vivian So of JoliePagel.com, and this is my podcast, This Is For You. Today's guest is Cassie Parks. She's a lifestyle coach and the author of seven books, such as Manifest 10K, Change Your Money Story, and Double Your Business. She also has a podcast called More Money, where she talks about law of attraction and manifesting more money to design the lifestyle you want. In this episode, we're talking about working on goals, having a better relationship with money, and investing in happiness. What came out of this interview was that I learned I need to have a clearer vision of what I want out of life, and I need to reprogram how I spend my money. So if you're a spending addict like I am and want to redesign how you spend your money, then this is the episode for you. You can reach Cassie Parks on CassieParks.com. As well, listen to her podcast called More Money on Apple Podcast. Thank you for tuning into my show. I hope you enjoy. Thank you, Cassie, for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, I'm excited for you to be here. Um, I was going through your books and a little bit research about you, um, like a good interview viewer should, right? Right, <laughs> and, absolutely. <laughs> and I'm just learning to interview people, by the way. Um, but I've noticed you wrote. Is it two fictional books and seven non-fictional books? Is that correct? That is correct. Oh, yay. I was like, oh, she's got yeah. some fictional on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> I do, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Tell me, what um, have you always had an interest in writing? You know what? I would, I would say n- no. No? <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Like, as a kid, I think maybe, I think maybe I can see, like, there were hints, but, like, you know, creative writing, but it just kind of got shut down or whatever. And, um, you know, the way I was like, okay, I have to, I, I wrote a lot in school. I was in a program where I had to write a lot of papers. So I was writing a lot, but it wasn't for fun. And so it wasn't until I got out and, and started and I knew that I wanted a career where I was speaking and I was coaching and stuff like that. And somebody said, well, you have to have a book if you're going to do those things. And so, I remember I wrote my first book, which is not on Amazon, um, and I loved it, and it flowed out of me, and it was pretty easy for me. It wasn't the best book. It's still good, um, but then as I you know, moved along, I knew that I wanted books to support what I did because it just felt like it was a great way to talk to people and to share what I do, and so the more that I've, I've done it, the more I do it, I think the more it's become a part of me. Okay. And so what inspired you to write your fictional pieces? Um, I I think that I had somehow, again, I think this is a little bit of a buried dream, maybe always wanted to write fiction. Mm-hmm. But I was in Tuscany a couple of years ago, and a friend of mine was writing a fiction book. And I just loved like listening to her process and going through that. And as I was there, this book just sort of, the, the characters started coming to me and parts and scenes started coming to me. And so I was at a point where I'd written six um, nonfiction books in the last two years. And I was like, I want to write a fiction book. I want to do fun and I want to see if I can do this. And so that was really, and then the story sort of just evolved from there. Was it like a really nice break to write something that you're not used to? Yeah, it was a nice break to to write something I'm not used to. And it also challenged me in a very different way because fiction is a little bit, I don't, I didn't have all the characters. I mean, I knew who they were, but you sort of explore in the moment a little more than when I write a nonfiction book. I know what I'm going to talk about. You know, I have it outlined like every single point, like I know all the stories I'm going to put in. So when I go to write, it's really just, you know, putting it all together. Whereas in fiction, I had to give some space and I had to rely on my improv training and and allow some of the characters' stories to come through me, some of the side characters. I didn't know their stories going into it until I started writing them. So you started writing more about finances first, correct? That's right, yeah. Okay, so what inspired you to work on those books? Is that your background in finance? I'm a- um, no. No, okay. <laughs> I mean, I, have, I did uh, when I was... Very young, I went to work for a financial services company for about a year. And that was where I learned, you know, like about saving and investing and set up my first IRA. 
but what happened is I studied the law of attraction and money mindset. And I knew from that job, like I wanted to be financially independent. Like I, I had learned this, like this was a thing people live off of their money and they don't have to go to work. And I knew that I wanted that. And so in my quest of, you know, becoming that person, um, I, I had done a lot of things. I'd studied LOA. I had put it into practice. I had done all these things. And I ended up, uh, one day I was trying to help a friend out and she ended up creating this course. I was like, oh, I could put together a course that helps people like manifest, you know, it was like $350 at the time. I said, I could totally do that. I outlined it one night and it wasn't until six months later that I picked it back up and I wrote it uh, because I needed the course. I needed to go through it again. When I quit my job, I had enough money to live off of but it just felt like things were coming up and I felt like money was kind of flying out the door. And I knew enough to know that I had to get that mindset under control or that wasn't going to be a great story. And uh, so I said, you know what, I'm going to write this program that I have outlined sitting here and I'm going to do it as I write it. And I launched it and it was a huge hit. I mean, there was over 200 over 200, I think it was 225, 225 people enrolled in the first class. It was my first um, five-figure launch in business. I'd only ever made $1,000 a month prior to that. And in that, you know, 90 days, um, I made over $10,000 on the course. Mm -hmm. And so that, and that sort of just started to become who I was. And then I started to explore that. And as I started coaching people in that program, I started seeing different things. And so my first book, Money Mindset for Champagne Life, was really a lot of the things that I had seen go on in that course and coaching it for a year and, you know, seeing how people could, you know, they could attract more money, but then they would make themselves work harder to, um, to make up for that. You know, they couldn't just receive a bigger amount of money and enjoy, enjoy it. They, a lot of times they were having to, you know, they were even creating more stress at work or they were making themselves work way harder, which is also things that I saw myself do, but I didn't realize it until I saw other people do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Yeah, that's great. Um, so yeah, I did read, uh, change your money story. Yeah. So yeah, I, I related to, I can relate to this because I often feel like when I receive a bonus check, it does end up being used towards like, I'll have it and I'll be like, oh, I have this money, I should save it. But then something else comes up and like maintenance or some other quirky thing that's not shopping related. Yeah, that's like, <laughs> you're like, oh, I can't it's not like, do uh, that. Yeah. And so it's like, I definitely related to that book. And then, um, yeah. So was there uh how did you like come up with the step-by-step -step solution to fix, um, you know, uh, money challenges? Like, I know you, you came up with a solution for yourself, but then, you know, to write it out for people, how did that come about? How did you work that through? You know, I just really, I, you know, I said, Oh, I can do this. I can teach people this. I wrote the outline and then, mm -hmm. um, I went through and I said, what, I asked myself, like, what makes people successful? I had also studied a lot about the brain and I knew a lot about neuroscience. And so what makes things stick and what makes things change? And so I developed Manifest 10K to hit those points. So, for example, in that program, there's a story every day about how money just showed up in my life when I wasn't expecting that. And that's a really great way looking for stories like that where money just shows up in people's life. Um, I call it belief amping. And it amps up your belief. It's not, you're not going out there and being like, money can come to me, money can come to me, money can come to me. You're actually reading stories that are saying, oh, this happens. And so opening up that possibility and making your brain believe it without sort of that hard forced mantra or I can do this type of thing that sometimes for some people, they find their brain resists that, right? Mm -hmm. If you don't have any evidence that money can just come to you, but, but yet you're like, money can come to me, money can come to me, money can come to me, that can feel a little forced and there can be resistance in your brain. And a lot of times it can have the, the adverse effect because your brain's like, nope, that doesn't happen. This is how we are. And so in some cases, you know, it doesn't get incredibly worse, but it can get worse. And so you know, I knew the outline of the program. I also knew the things that needed to come into play with our brains to support our brains in this change that I designed over 90 days so that it's, 
it's small shifts. It's small shifts in awareness. It's small shifts in just like, huh, look at this a little bit differently versus bombarding somebody. Most people go into change and they're like, oh my God, I'm going to change everything today. And here's the Mm -hmm. list of all the things. And here's the beliefs that have to go. And here's all this. But when I designed Manifest 10K, um, I just designed it to support easy change and a little bit at a time, because if you do a little bit and we can shift our brain, we can shift our thinking a little bit every day in 90 days, we really change a lot. And, um, yeah. Yeah. It's kind of like, um, you're exercising basically, you know, how they, Mm -hmm. the theory is if you do something for 21 days straight, then it becomes a habit. So that's what you're enforcing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, new habits and new beliefs. So it's not just the habit of doing it, but just seeing the world differently, seeing money differently, interacting Mm -hmm. with money differently, Mm -hmm. um, celebrating it. Yeah. And then as yeah, as I kept coaching people through the program, I've made it better and better. I've seen where um, you know, I can put in a little extra support when people have a hiccup. Um, once, once it's not, wasn't just, you know, my experience. I've, you know, I've coached thousands of people through the program. So then I've even made it better and more full of support where people get off track. Mm -hmm. So what made you decide to leave the traditional workforce? Was it just mainly because you wanted more freedom or more money or just wanted to retire at 32? (laughs) (laughs) I wanted freedom. I didn't want to have to go to work for as in, since I, you know, had taken that job at 19 and heard this financial independence term, I had wanted to create that for myself. I wanted, I wanted to choose whether I wanted got up and went to work or what I wanted to do for the day. I didn't want, you know, 10 hours of my day to be dictated by you have to be to work at seven. And I was working a job where I had to be there till five. And, you know, you can only take vacation if someone else isn't off or you can't work a half a day and, and, you know, go do something else, you know, or you only have four weeks vacation, whatever it was. I just wanted the freedom for me is the most important thing. Um, because I actually love to, I love to engage. There's certain work I love to do, but I didn't, I didn't want to have to do it on someone else's schedule. I wanted to be free to choose what I did when I did it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel the same way. (laughs) (laughs) I have a day job, so (laughs) this is my side uh, hobby slash, I don't know, hustle. (laughs) I love it. I love it. That's how you, you know, that's how you get out, I feel like. Yeah, Yeah. and this is, this is really fun, have been really fun for me and very, um, it's challenging because I'm learning every day when I'm uh, trying to do a podcast or learning new ways to interview people. What were you doing before? And I noticed that you invest in real estate. So was that something that you did before as well? Uh, So that wasn't my job. I was in um, regulatory. I did regulatory filings to different states that my company worked in. Mm -hmm. Um, So it was nothing like coaching. (laughs) Uh Um, I did also do a little bit of production. So I did some numbers. But um, real estate, I started doing... um, as a way to build my passive income um, mm-hmm. and really just started, you know, I had my first property I bought and then, you know, to become financially independent, somebody had said, well, like the quickest way is to lower your expenses and so that you don't have as many expenses that you have to cover. You know, you can live on less, you have to create less passive income to get free. Obviously you can create more once you get there, but to get out. And so I was really focused on that. And when everyone, I had a bunch of roommates that lived in my first house and when everyone moved out and kind of went on with their lives, I was like, this is too big for one person. So I bought a smaller house down the street and I started, you know, renting that out and investing in that. And then there was another property that kind of came up. And then it was a few years before I really then was like, uh, just kind of stumbled back into it in a little bit different way. I had invested in those properties thinking, okay, 30 years from now, that'll be awesome. Um, But I really... I started to look at it differently is how much passive income could I create in a month and um, made a couple other investments that allowed me to quit my job. Because Mm -hmm. in the, in the meantime, I had been, you know, I'd been working my money mindset. And so I was, you know, doing what I call just investing in my happiness, which meant I was living off of very little, but I was super happy uh, because I wasn't sacrificing. I was investing in what made me really happy instead of just going on a shopping spree, which was my sort of, that was just a quick high for me. And I, so once I stopped doing things like that for me, um, you know, I was able to just save a lot of money. And so when the opportunity came, I couldn't make some investments in properties and work my way out of my job. 
Excellent. Yeah, we always go through that emotional shopping therapy. It's, <laughs> it is a really good high. <laughs> yeah. I like going through that right now. Like there's this, real, this shirt I really want, but I'm like, I don't really need it. <laughs> Can you save my money? I need to learn from you. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, as you were creating more passive income for yourself, were you scared to leave your full-time work to create your own success? Um, you know, I read this question when you sent it over and I was, I was, have been thinking about it all weekend Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I don't, I think that I was scared to a certain degree, but I was also certain. I mean, I had enough money to pay my bills, so it's a little bit different. I didn't just walk out and hope this coaching thing would work. And in fact, I, I make way more than I ever imagined. I now make more coaching than I did in my uh, full-time job. And but I didn't actually see that as a possibility when I walked out the door. I was so focused on freedom and I was like, oh, if I can figure out how to make $10,000 a year coaching, right, I'll, that'll be fine. That'll just supplement. That'll be what I travel with, you know, because because mm-hmm. I was paying my rent and my phone bill and all of that with my passive income. And so I think I was I was a little bit scared. I think more I had other, you know, I was a little bit fighting other people's voices. You know, I was walking away from a six figure job where my boss was grooming me to take her position. Um, you know, and I, and so walking away from that kind of an income to a lot of people seemed crazy. Yeah. 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 Anything like that seems riskier. So happy to hear you're wildly successful in what you do, which is awesome. Um, but what good advice uh, would you give to who are all striving to create that lifestyle that they want? So my first advice is always to get really clear on what that is. Um, people okay. think they know what that is. A lot of times, um, you know, I use this example sometimes, you drive by this big mansion on the hill and everybody's like, ah, oh, I want to live there. And a lot of the time, like, yeah, we'd all love that house. But most when we start digging deep, we want the life that we think the person who owns that house has, right? And so a lot of times in our mind, that's like, oh, they have more than enough money. They're not working so hard. They're not stressed out. They're not this. They're not that. Um, And that's really what we want is we want to not be working so hard. We want to have more freedom. We want to not be stressed out. We want to, you know, be calmer um, versus the house. I like, and I get it. A lot of people, we do want that big house. But what I've found in digging deep with a lot of people that I work with is they want the life that they think that house brings. And so my first step is always get really clear. Like, what are the things that you want? Name three things that are most important to you. Like for me, it was freedom above all else. I wanted to be free. Um, and I wanted to choose what I did when I got up in the morning. That was number one. So like, pick the three most important things in this life that you would design and get clear about those okay. and then start moving mm-hmm. towards that. Cause I've been thinking about that myself. Like I, I really don't always want to be at where I'm working. I love mm-hmm. people there, but you know, sometimes it just, I feel like my time is constrained and then I come home and then I do it all over again, you know? Yeah. Um, I do want that freedom. And so I had trouble like envisioning, well, what, what do I do? What do I start? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I would say the next, the next step that I always tell my people is to just keep in this, like to don't try and figure it out right away. Right. The thing that most people do is they do that. They go, okay, I want freedom. And I did this. (laughs) I I did Mm -hmm. this for years, which is why there was, kind of a big gap. But once I figured it out, it went really fast. Um, You know, I I tried really hard to make it work. I tried to build my coaching business to get me out of my job. And for me, it was one day I got really clear. And I'm like, what do you really want? Go back to what you want. I was like, freedom. And, And then as soon as I was honest with myself about that, and just did a couple other things, like, the next properties that I bought sort of fell into place. And so what I tell people is get really clear on that, but focus not on the how, but get every detail you can about that life. And I teach this through scripting. Um, And you can check out lifestyle design for champagne life or double your business for a little more detail on how to do this, but to get those 
those details, all of those details versus jumping into the how am I going to make it happen? Stay longer in the what does it look like? What does it feel like? What am I going to be doing every day? Because if you play in that space, your brain will start to give you the how. It'll start to pave the path for you. So you're just basically reprogramming your brain to figure out the right road to take. Correct? Yeah, you're reprogramming your brain to see more of what you want. Right. Mm -hmm. So often when we're in a job, we, we get focused on what we don't want. We get focused on how much time it's taking, how much freedom we don't have, how much stress we have and what we and when we do that, like our brain will give us more of what we want. That's what it does. What we focus on, we get more of. It shows us that, you know, there's so many bits of information coming in that our brain has to have a way to filter. And one of the ways that it filters that information is by what we've been highlighting and what we've been focusing on. It'll give us more of that. And so when we start thinking about the life that we want to design, if we start focusing on, okay, freedom, and how can I have a little bit more freedom today? How can I experience a little bit now? Like, is it just going for a five minute walk at work and, and being free and enjoying that? Um, or is it, you know, focusing on people that have left their jobs or people that have freedom, you know, focusing on those things that we want versus what we don't want will help your brain figure out how to get you more of those things that you're focusing on that you do want. So it is reprogramming it to be focused on what you want. That's what I wanted. <laughs> <'Cause> I'm, like, <laughs> I, I'm terrible at focusing. I just am. And it's getting worse as I am become older. And I don't know if because I have a full-time job and then I also have a seven-year-old son. So it's just like everything, you know, it's just really chaotic up there. So I like what you said about, you know, um, figuring out the three things that I need to do. And then either or going for walks to feel that freedom, just like little things to get you started and motivating you to change your lifestyle. You retired when you were 32, which is incredible. Um, can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah. Do um, you want to know the process? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> seriously, like not a lot of people can say they retired at 32 or, you know, yeah. in their 30s. <laughs> Absolutely. And even having been the person doing it, it was like incredible as I was doing it. It was my friends who started saying like, I was like, oh, I'm quitting my job. I have enough passive income to pay my bills. And they were the ones who started like, you're retiring. And so that sort of just caught on. And the way that I did that was, I think I mentioned a little bit earlier that somebody had said, you know, the, the way, the quickest way to financial independence, which for me was what I wanted. That's not what everybody wants, but, um, is to lower your expenses. So I had been focused on that. And as I did that process, I really focused on only investing. I use the word invest when I talk about money instead of spend for a couple of reasons. Investing means you, you expect a return when you invest in something. Mm -hmm. And so I'm always, when I invest in a shirt, I'm like, am I going to get a return on this? Like, am I buying this because it's on clearance? Or am I buying this because I really love the shirt? Or am I buying it just because I want to buy something? What's the return on investment? And so I always check myself on that. And if I love it, I'm like, awesome. I'm going to get a huge return. I'm going to wear it a million times. Um, you know, same with anything. Anything that I do, you know, I look at... Um, my mortgage as an investment in my home and where I'm living. And I just always use that word. So that was one of the th big things that I did is I stopped spending money and I started investing it always. I just looked at everything as an investment. And I also started focusing on investing in my happiness with my money, really seeing like, okay, this gives me, you know, the, the filling my shopping bag, you know, on the clearance work, rack would give me a quick hit high, but investing in a vacation gives me a new experience. And that has, you know, that lasts a lot longer for me, that investment pays out longer. And so I really started to look at things like that in, you know, change my wording around money, I started investing in my happiness, which meant that I was actually spending a lot less money, I was investing a lot less money. And I wasn't sacrificing, I was just living my life. And I was super happy. And I had lowered my expenses um, a lot. And, mm -hmm. and so what that meant was I kept, you know, I kept moving up in my job. And so every time I'd get more money, I just saved more money. And, you know, and then as things came out and I could um, came up and I could invest in real estate, I'd invest in more real estate and I'd invest in more real estate. And, um, you know, eventually the two numbers 
matched. I had more money in passive income than I had expenses. And that was the moment where I said, okay, uh, I worked a little bit longer than that just because I wanted a little more of a cushion in my savings account. Mm -hmm. But it was the moment where I said, okay, I can do this. I can leave my job and I can pay my bills and I can get up and do what I want in the morning. And so that's what I did because I couldn't, I was working close to 60, at least 60 hours a week. So building my coaching practice on the side became very hard. I just didn't have the energy for it. And now I get it. Um, Mm -hmm. And so I knew that I had to get out of my job if I wanted to build the coaching practice that I wanted to build. I guess I I need to rewire my brain as well. Like to to this day, I spend a little bit less, but it's still like a drug. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, it's like Mm -hmm. a drug to spend money. So I get it. I like that, that whatever you buy is an investment. That's a great strategy to go about spending or not spending or investing. Yeah, Yeah, investing, right? It makes it a little bit easier than, and that just naturally rewires your brain because you Mm -hmm. naturally, and then when you invest in things, you expect a return. So when you're, you know, doing other things as well, you're like, oh, I'm going to get a return. Oh, money's always coming back to me. You start to kind of, um, without really trying hard, you get that belief. Money always comes back to me if you're always investing in things. Other than your amazing books and your podcasts, um, what other resources should our listeners look into to build a lifestyle of their dreams? I mean, those are really, for me, like, those are the two things. My podcast walks, it it goes in a couple different spurts. It goes through Uh um, the beginning. I just talked about how I built my business and how I leveraged the law of attraction to do all the things that I was doing. Um, Now it's stories with uh, my current clients. They are, have given me um, the opportunity to share with listeners their whole journey. So it'll be like six months. You'll hear it in like six back to back episodes. So you really get to hear about growing and what it is like to actually change your brain and what you go through during that time when you're stepping into this lifestyle that you want and, and the things that are awesome and the things that are not awesome because there's there's some breakdowns that have to happen to um, have breakthroughs and so you get to hear about those as well and then the books those are really my two I mean if you always um, I think one book that um, inspires a lot of people is Tim Ferriss's four-hour work week Um, but I don't I don't read a lot of other people's stuff unless I'm that just has to be a hit of inspiration because I am focused I know what I do works and Mm -hmm. so um, that's mostly the lane that I stay in. Yeah, yeah I read Tim Ferriss's uh, four-hour work week, too, and I do listen to his podcast, which is really interesting. Yeah. But, um, yeah, he, and, he's... Hmm, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, and Robert Kiyosaki, uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad, is probably one of the first books I ever read, which made me realize you could do something different. You didn't have to choose, um, you didn't have to choose a job. Yes. Or fall yeah. into a job. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Which we tend to do a lot just because. <laughs> yeah. But I love, yeah, I love people. I, my biggest suggestion um, is not to find as many resources as possible, but okay. to find a resource you love and work it. I think too often people pick up the next book and the next book and the next book, where if yeah. you had picked one book, if you worked a book for a year, it doesn't matter what book it is if as long as you love it you resonate you might not love it in all moments of the year because that's part of the growth process but if you picked one author one book and you were like I'm just going to I'm going to do everything like I think they would tell me to do it I'm going to dive in and I'm just going to keep reading this and you committed to that for a year I think most people would have way more success than jumping from book to book to book Yeah I think I agree cuz not every book is written the same way or have the same vibe or have great advice Yeah <laughs> so like if you stick to one that you really enjoy and it works then commit to that for the whole year if that makes sense Yeah instead of getting all these other you know it's almost like a a stalemate like you're just delaying yeah. delaying your dreams I guess is what I'm trying to say Absolutely. Yeah. Because you just kind of keep, you know, going from one thing and most people that write books have brilliant ideas and they're all sharing their stories, but there's a million different ways to get to where you want. And you just have to pick the one that resonates for you and start moving forward. Thank you for being on the show, Cassie. It's been wonderful speaking with you and learning more about how to create a better lifestyle with more freedom. And then also um, learning to have better finances. Thank you for having me, Vivian. It's been so much fun. And you're doing a great job interviewing people. (laughs) 
Thank you. <laughs> so it's great to hear that because I feel like I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I do and I don't. How about that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I love it though. You're like, that's the way we get better. We just do it, right? Yeah, we do. Thank you for listening. I want to thank Cassie for coming on my show. I really enjoyed learning from her and have already implemented some of the strategies she talked about during the show. For instance, I do have a clear definition of what I want out of life, and I will be having a clear definition and how I should be investing in my happiness. Feel free to contact Cassie through her website and to thank her for coming on the show at CassieParks.com. If you'd like to go over what we covered today on my podcast, visit JoliePagel.com backslash podcasts. You can subscribe to my podcast on Apple Podcast, SoundCloud, Spotify, Sprecher, Stitcher, and YouTube. If you enjoyed this episode and my previous episodes, please leave me a five-star rating and hopefully a stellar review. Tell me your takeaway from this show or what you would like to hear in the future. You can message me at byjoliepagel on Instagram or email me at vivian at joliepagel.com. All this info will be in the show notes. Please do share this podcast with your family, friends, and entrepreneurs because life is about sharing. Until next time.